We're joined now by California Republican Congressman Tom McClintock. He is one of those Republicans who voted no yesterday on the impeachment of Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas. Why? Well, for the same reasons I oppose the sham impeachment. Trump. Uh, impeachment is very narrowly defined as a treason, bribery, or other high crimes or misdemeanors. That term has a very specific meaning, crimes relating to the office. Now, uh, Alejandro Mayorkas is guilty of, of, of maladministration on a truly cosmic scale, but that's not an impeachable offense. And we know that because the American founders specifically considered that uh, during their deliberations and rejected it because of uh, it, in Madison's words, would have placed the executive branch under the control of the legislative and destroyed the entire architecture of the Constitution itself. Um, but, you know, even if uh, it were impeachable, um, the other question you have to ask is a very practical one, and that is in, uh, in, in a fantasy world in which two-thirds of the Senate would actually remove him from office, he would simply be uh, replaced with another uh, left-wing cabinet secretary uh, carrying out exactly the same policies. Uh, it's not going to improve things to replace Mayorkas with, say, Ocasio-Cortez. Uh, this is not going to be solved by replacing one left-wing official with another. It can only be solved by replacing the entire administration, and that can only be done by the American people at the ballot box. Which leads to the question, you oppose this impeachment, you oppose the impeachment of Donald Trump. There's an impeachment investigation going on by House Republicans right now when it comes to President Joe Biden. Do you oppose that? Uh, uh, that is regarding bribery, and that is clearly an impeachable offense. Whether the evidence supports it or not is yet to be seen, but it's certainly uh, a, a legitimate inquiry. You let it be known to your Republican colleagues that you're going to be voting no, a 10-page document that viewers can find on your website yes. explaining your reasons right. to vote against this. Uh, what was it like on the floor last night uh, when that vote was tied uh, and you were one of the no votes uh, that was uh, making that vote be a tie Well, vote. you know, when, you, when you're an outlier from your party on an issue, you better be damn sure you're right. Uh, and uh, I took a great deal of time to look at this very carefully because I am vigorously opposed to this administration's uh, uh, open borders policies. Uh, but it was so clear to me by the time I, I compiled that memo to get my own thinking straight uh, that this is the right thing to do. And, uh, and, and that actually provides a great deal of uh, peace and comfort at moments like that. Took some heat from some of your Republican colleagues on that. Not sure if you saw Marjorie Taylor and Green's comments to reporters leaving that conference meeting, but this is about 40 seconds of it for you. Mr. McClintock said that he's not going to impeach my office today. He said it would unconstitutionally expand impeachment. What's your reaction to that? Well, my reaction is clearly he's not paying attention to the American people. And he is, he's failing his oath of office. That's what I would say. I would say he needs to grow some courage and read the room. The room is our country. And the American people are fed up with millions of people abusing our laws, Mayorkas breaking the law and allowing millions of people to invade. He needs to do the right thing and, and I would urge all of my colleagues to do, do the right thing. Grow some courage and actually do something for once, for once in this Congress. Congressman McClintock, your reaction? Well, instead of reading the room, I'd suggest that maybe she read the Constitution, uh, that she took an oath to support and defend. And Con that Constitution very clearly lays out the grounds for impeachment. This dumbs down those grounds dramatically and would set a precedent that could be turned against the conservatives on the Supreme Court or a future Republican administration uh, the moment the Democrats take control of the Congress. Congressman Tom McClintock with us until the bottom of the hour, 8.30 a.m. Eastern this morning, taking your phone calls. Phone lines as usual, Democrats 202-748-8000, Republicans 202-748-8001, Independents 202-748-8001. 8002. Let me shift to a different piece of legislation, not an impeachment vote. Uh, there's uh, a procedural vote taking place in the Senate today on what's known as the bipartisan border package. I know you're not going to be taking that vote today, not a United States senator. Your thoughts on that, uh, that negotiation and where it landed? Well, I, I think it's a giant step backwards. Now, again, the, the, the provision that I'm the most concerned about is the one that requires up to 4,000 illegal migrants to be released every day into the country. When it reaches 4,000, then the president has the discretion to uh, close the border, and it hits 5,000 a day for seven days, he's required to do that. Now, if you compare that to the, what Biden is doing, that's an improvement. 
But if you consider that the next president may well uh, uh, be elected specifically to secure our borders again, that's a giant step backward. Is this um, a matter of just finding the right number there? If no, it's no, 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 no. It's you know, I, I, I made a lot of trips to the border. I've talked to the border patrol, and you've talked to us about lot. some of those trips. Yeah, and and uh, uh, you know, two t- two observations. Uh, number one. Yeah, I asked them, look, we, we can't enforce the law. Uh, we can only write the laws. Tell, tell me, what laws do you need us to write? And they replied, we don't need new laws. We simply need to enforce the laws that we already have. And there's a great deal of discretion in the enforcement of those laws. We saw that in the difference between the Trump and the Biden administrations. The day Donald Trump left office, uh, our borders were secure. Uh, the Remain in Mexico policy had slowed illegal uh, immigration and phony asylum claims to a trickle. Uh, the border wall was nearing completion. Uh, we were actually enforcing court-ordered deportations. On his first day in office, Joe Biden reversed all of those policies and began what has become the largest mass illegal migration in recorded history. So, th- so it depends upon who the president is and whether he is determined to enforce the laws. And the problem that I see with the Senate bill is it would tie the hands of a future president and, and bind him uh, to, uh, to, to, to release four th- up to 4,000 migrants a day into the country. Now, the cartels have complete control of the, of the border. They, you don't cross that border without their permission. Um, uh, they'll simply regulate the flow uh, at, at 3,999 uh, every single day. That's about 1.8 million illegal migrations a year into this country. We can't sustain that. One other piece of legislation to ask about yesterday, the other one uh, that failed in the House yesterday, $17 billion in aid for Israel. That's a tragedy that that failed. Your vote on that was for the bill. Yes, absolutely, right. absolutely. Uh, I, I think what so. happens with that legislation now? What happens with funding for Israel? Uh, you know, it, it, it was the simplest single subject bill that's been presented to the Congress in, in, in my years in office. Um, uh, and and uh, we had a number of conservatives who opposed it because it wasn't paid for. Uh, we had a, a number of Democrats oppose it because they're, they're frankly, uh, pro-Hamas. Um, uh, I, I don't believe, though, that the, the, the failure of that bill should reflect the actual will of the Congress. Uh, I, I think the uh, conservatives who voted against it ought to consider very carefully the, 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 their perspective on this and what's more important, the survival of Israel or a 14 uh, to 17 billion dollar uh, appropriation that's, that's, that's not paid for. Uh, I, I'm sympathetic to the fiscal concerns, very much so. I mean, I've served on the Budget Committee for many years. I'm one of its senior members. Um, but uh, I, I think these conservatives got their, got their uh, priorities backwards and, and I'm hoping they will step back and reflect on that. And then briefly, your thoughts on new aid for Ukraine. Uh, I support military assistance for Ukraine for the same reason. Uh, uh, you know, the, the, I'm afraid that you, we, we, have, we have dictators around the world, rogue regimes, uh, uh, you know, obviously China, North Korea, Iran, that are watching all this very carefully. And if Putin is allowed to, to um, subjugate Ukraine, uh, if if uh, 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 we lose uh, uh, Israel in, in the Middle East, that's going to be a very, very powerful signal to dictators around the world to march on their objectives. Uh, and uh, the, the, I'm afraid that we would see uh, uh, this nation drawn into a major, major conflagration uh, that, frankly, we're not fiscally prepared to fight.